Storm clouds on a hot summer afternoon. To the Great Plains farmer, they could mean welcome relief for parched fields or total destruction. Each year, hailstorms in the United States cause over $300 million in property and crop losses. World losses are in the billions. But the farmer isn't the only one watching the storm build. At several field stations in northeastern Colorado, other groups of men are keeping a close check on its progress. Scientists and technicians from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. NCAR is the coordinating agency for a national hail research experiment, which is attempting to find out more about what produces hail and how it can be controlled. Over 10 institutes and 20 individual projects are participating in the program. Scores of research tools are assembled in this area, one of the highest frequency hail areas in the U.S., often called Hail Alley. Radars, weather balloons, special aircraft, time-lapse photography, and many ground and airborne measuring instruments. One of these instruments, developed at NCAR, is a free-falling package that probes the inside of a thunderstorm called the drop sun. We have uh, showing tops at 43,000 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on a bearing from our station at 040, uh, range about 35 miles. At least that's the outer edge of the storm. It's showing a Z factor of 62. Okay. It's really pumping fast. Uh, we Let's it? check that with uh, Raymond, All radar. Right. We better plot it first, though, and uh, see if we can give them a range of bearings. Okay. Uh, -huh. uh Raymer, this is really over. Uh, Raymer, go ahead, Danny. We now have a cell at 040 degrees 35 miles from Gill with a top of 43,000 and Z value of 62. Do you confirm, over? Uh, Roger, confirmation. Yeah, uh, we have the storm at uh, Gill 040 at 35, and uh, we're measuring tops at about 42,000 and a Z of 64. Over. That sounds good. We will keep uh, tracking this cell and may go for drops on shortly. What is this track you know? East, southeast. Oh, that's good. That, that, that'll stay in the area. Of yeah, the that area. That's right.
Public Beauty Radar. I have radar contact. Copy your 1611 ETA at Gill. We have a storm on the Gill 040, range 35 for your drop. The storm is moving east southeast. Reflectivity now 62. Radar tops 43,000. Over. Right, 307 Delta to stand on Gill Radio 040, range 35. The objective of the drop sound mission is to release instrument packages into the top of the thunderstorm. This thunderhead soars to almost 50,000 feet. Its outline covers more area than the city of Boston or Philadelphia. From 100 miles away, it might seem peaceful. But in its path across farmlands, it destroyed 17,000 acres of wheat and over a million dollars in total property. Inside a large storm are cells of intense energy and motion. These active regions contain updrafts reaching 90 miles an hour, capable of pulling in 300,000 tons of water vapor and 20 million tons of air a minute. The drop sun's task is to measure the violent vertical winds inside a storm. In principle, the operation is simple. A plane flying above the cloud drops a series of drop sons into an active cell. The positions of the sons are constantly tracked by ground stations. The sons themselves measure such things as temperature and change of pressure and transmit their data to the ground. All signals are recorded at one of the ground stations for analysis later. The drop sond is about three feet long with cloth fins to provide drag which controls its falling speed. Once through the cloud, a parachute opens and lowers it gently to the ground. Inside the sonde are electronic sensors and 12 telemetry points. These relay measurements of velocities, pressures, change of pressure, temperature, internal calibration, time, and distance. During a sonde's fall, the 12 items of information are transmitted every five seconds. A high degree of precision and reliability is essential. Each drop son must be carefully calibrated and checked in a vacuum chamber. This reproduces the low air pressures the sonde will encounter at high altitudes. Well, do these two points here look as though they really don't belong to the set? If you do the talk, do the calibration once again, mm -hmm. and then let's put it through the, through the machine, see what it looks like. If we get a good run, call it good. If not, let's open up the sign and see what can be done to repair it. Okay. Mm -hmm. In addition to the exacting inspection and calibration of each son's electronic components, the engineers continue to test new methods to improve the son's performance. Okay, let's see what kind of gain this has. Looks like about one dB more. Uh, we had too much uh, low frequency response there for a while. Did you change, uh, how many capacitors did you change in that circuit? Well, just, just the one, and it's a 001. Okay, why don't we take a tangential sensitivity thing? Okay, then we can go to a 005 and see what yeah. that will give us. But we're getting 2 dB out of that. Yeah, gee, I wish we had more gain in the uh, receiver. With this 2 dB gain, plus the preamps, that ought to give us a couple extra well, that's, uh, that's an improvement over what we had. Okay. For each mission, ten drop sons are loaded into an ejection pod beneath the aircraft. The pod uses powerful springs to eject the sons and is heated to protect the electronics until the moment of release. You can see 
feel it. There it is, isn't it? It feels like it. Okay. Once the crew is alerted for a drop mission, it may take 45 minutes to reach the target storm. Speed is essential because the cloud can soon drift out of the drop sond monitoring area. Each mission is coordinated with the FAA. Drop sond one, this is Saber on a 307 Delta. Are you ready? Roger, drop sound. We're seeing good signals on all channels, except uh, channel 8. Over. Operation Hailstone Aircraft, we have a live drop mission. All aircraft will clear the cloud. Clear the cloud. Over. Sabre Liner 307 Delta Greeley, 30 second warning. Mandela, all signs away. We are uh, proceeding with the temperature sounding. 307 Delta, Roger. Anticipate the signs will reach the ground in 30 minutes. Vector 270, you're cleared for your sounding. We have just dropped the signs in what seems to be a, a very good cloud. How do you read your sounds? Over. This is drop sound. We are now seeing good signals on all signs. Uh, all sounds should be down in about 20 minutes. Over. Roger, drop sound. Later, a light plane scans the drop area for SONS and directs a ground crew by radio. Since the project began, over 90% of the drop SONS have been recovered and reused. Data recorded at the ground stations are prepared for computer processing. I think, Jim, that this is the uh, sound that we put the preamp in. Now look how strong those signals are. Information obtained directly from the interior of a storm can be correlated with radar patterns to provide a more accurate interpretation of the storm's profile. 
It also helps in the construction of theoretical hailstorms, mathematical models, which simulate actual storm conditions in the computer. Some of the raw numerical data will be converted by the computer to graphic presentations of the storm's wind structure. In there, it did not show the updraft. This is July 22. Where is this on the map? Uh, the drop point is here at 41 miles, 040 from Gill. There's 040 out of Gill, and that's uh, straight north of Raymer radar. And then these are the pickup points. Well, here we have the updraft in one, two, three, four of the sons clear up to son number six, which does not have the updraft, and number seven does not have... In the overall design of the National the Hail Research Experiment, the drop son is only one of many analytical tools. But as we combine each aspect of the study to determine the complex forces which produce a hailstorm, we may yet discover the key to predicting and controlling its destructive power. And so we don't know yet which model of the thunderstorm this data will fit. But we haven't had any such measurements before that I know of, uh, in which we've got the vertical mapping of the winds in the thunderstorm. The next step will be to compare these soundings to the radar records and to the surface observations to see if we can put together the structure of this particular thunderstorm. Uh, <clears throat> these have only been through the computer once, haven't they? That's right. So there's some points to be fixed there. Uh, we don't know.